All right, I think this is working. This is another live stream from the home office, and I'm going to try to do one that seems interesting because I want to bring some good news to people. So from now on, I'm doing some good news streams. At least I hope so. I have no idea whether or not we'll be able to fix this phone or not. I hope that we will. This is from Anne Marie. So this is from Anne Marie. Let me just check to see if this stream looks like it's working. Let's say skip. I see hi to some people on chat. So let's get started. We're going to start with the note here. This is from Anne Marie who says that she got her phone wet while snorkeling in the ocean, despite being placed in a waterproof bag. So we've heard this story before. She noticed that it was wet within one minute. She took it to a local repair shop where he dried out the interior of the phone and he removed the salt minerals, but he was not able to get the phone to boot. I'm an American, but currently living in Hong Kong. I can FedEx it to your location and then have it return shipped um, if necessary. So there we go. I thought this one was cool because it was a saltwater damaged phone that came from China, I guess you can you call Hong Kong China? You know, it's a, it's a little debatable. Special Republic of China. Um, it's, it got sent from Hong Kong all the way here to Rochester, New York, which I think is pretty pretty cool story because in China there's a lot of folks that are really good at fixing phones because they make phones, but they approach it really really differently. So it's interesting. Someone chose to send their phone all the way over here. So hopefully we can help out Anne Marie. And give her some good news because don't we all need some good news so let's start by just kind of taking a look at it already uh 1080p 8 yeah i'm not i'm open open to suggestions for what to do to improve these streams i did change the bit rate and make it go down because last time it was um really bad Let's see what happens if I try to make it go up a little bit. I'm really concerned that I'm not able to use hot air and stream at the same time. So that was kind of where it fell apart last time. But that might have been YouTube's fault. You never really know. All right, let's see if that improves things. I added a little bit more, uh, bumped up the bit rate. Okay, so let's get rid of my, our little Hong Kong. Isn't it beautiful? Downtown Hong Kong. All right, let's go. Uh, take a take a look, man. You, I feel like it's so unnatural to stream anymore. You can't talk about anything. Uh, I think all of my last videos have been uh, demonetized by YouTube, uh, which I really object to. I have a PhD in molecular biology. I think I should be able to talk about uh, current events. All right, let's let's just see. This one's kind of an experiment to see if I can actually make a stream that brings good news and uh, if YouTube will tolerate it. All right, so what we're looking at is Anne Marie's iPhone 8. And when we look inside, we can see that their claim of, I took it to a guy and he kind of cleaned the minerals out of it. Yeah, I mean, it seems kind of like rub, rubbed off saltiness, but definitely got water damage. And that's pretty common. I've been seeing a lot of water damage lately from people using Clorox wipes. So don't use Clorox wipes, use something alcohol based. Uh, one of the little like things you get when you eat lobster, the little alcohol clean your hands things. Those would be a lot better for your phone. In fact, I might do a video just on that later. This is the, the back housing, looks pretty normal. And then I took out the logic board. So let's switch, if we can, over to microscope view. So this is the new Thing I'm trying. I've tried to set up a separate hand cam. Jessa, you froze. Okay, better now. You unfroze. Please leave them up. You have no idea the calmness they gave me. You know, I, I absolutely am going to leave them up and I'm probably going to do some dedicated videos where you, I want for you guys to be able to talk to your friendly neighborhood molecular biologist. I've been talking a lot on Facebook and Twitter and I um, I think that it's good for anybody that is in my sphere of influence to feel like they can get real answers and to be able to ask about, you know, questions that involve science. 
I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't go to school to get a PhD in genetics to, to feel and to, to then have a little bit of an audience and then feel like I can't say anything. That's definitely not cool with me. So today I'm going to do an experiment just to try to give some good news to Anne Marie because I, I think we need good news. So I'm going to try to do that, but don't worry. I will be back with sort of a let's just talk, ask me anything kind of thing later. All right, but I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way to go. Change it to 240p. It froze for a few seconds after bumping up bitrate. Okay, video's fine. Then we're going to continue on because I'm, I'm trying to work out how are we going to survive. I want to be able to stream uh, from home and see what we can do. All right, so hopefully now we're looking under the microscope. So let's go ahead and give it a formal look. All right, so this... Um, let's see. Somebody's been here before us because we're missing our foam around here. And let's see, I can see some, we're looking for water. So there's some green right here. This is pretty significant. So this, that we've got some dudes knocked off. Let's poke these guys. They seem okay. And let's continue on. Sometimes I like to peek under here a little bit of maybe water let's go out a little bit further but this looks pretty good other than that one spot up here all right there's maybe some you know ugly looking guy here that guy's so ugly that it's probably worth it to knock him off because i'm afraid that i will forget this guy yeah that's pretty right there big zap but everything that's buried underneath this waterproof coating looks good everything over here looks good everything over here looks good let's flip the board and on the back side these guys get hit a lot of the time but they look okay a little like flake of salt now this is really this is really interesting this is um, this is a layer of shield that is kind of like peeled up a little bit. Uh, maybe that's normal. All right, let's peek under there. So somebody has kind of peeled up this half layer. That's really interesting that they just sort of peeled it a little bit. Let's check. Oh, pretty rainbow board. I love rain. See, this is a happy stream already. Look at that. Don't you just love, can you guys see that? The, the, well, you guys can't see it as much when they, when you get the beautiful rainbow colors in there. All right. Pretty good news looking in this area. We'll get rid of that piece of paper. And then somebody has been here before as well. They've, they've peaked left it intact on that side so let's go ahead and peel off rainbow yay pretty rainbow board all right let's see water damage is fine now a lot of times with the sevens and eights they get really hit down here but this one looks really good so i think this one's a great candidate for good news and it better work out or i'm totally gonna just sit here and burst into tears just like I did the other day looking for butter for a recipe. I, I knew that I bought butter, couldn't find it. I can't go back to the store, totally screwed. I found it in the freezer, but not before bursting into tears because I think everybody is just really, really stressed out. Even when you know, you know, you're, you're okay. You don't really have any particular reason. It's still just a really, really tough time. So I've been kind of thinking, what can we do to, I think that when we look back on our time, these days we're going to be wistful and we're going to think man i really squandered that time man i wish i could go back to that time put yourself into that position and look back and think what what are you going to wish if it all went back to normal tomorrow what are you going to wish that you had done with this time and start doing that so for me it's start uh spending more time with friends even if that means virtual time that's something I've been uh, kind of slacking on. So that's what I've been trying to do lately. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead. What is the rainbow from? The rainbow is from some sort of, who knows, post board processing cleaning that doesn't get rinsed off. We used to think that it was like suntan lotion or some sort of oil-based thing. 
but it's underneath shields as we can see. So it's something that is part of cleaning and drying and coating a board that doesn't, that normally gets rinsed off, that maybe sometimes two boards are stuck together and it doesn't actually get rinsed off on some of them. So it's kind of a little bit of an Easter egg. Phone from China. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead and see what happens if we connect this to power because there doesn't seem to be enough corrosion. Really the only bad spot is right around the battery connector itself. And we're gonna see what happens then if we just connect it to DC power supply. So we'll connect it to DC power and then prompt it to boot and I'm going to prompt it to boot with a dock. All right. Shortage of cleaning supply, says Greg. Never checked the TP supply today. After I went grocery shopping. Ten people allowed in the store at one time. Yeah, well, that's the... I, I was really sad just to see our little local grocery store had done a beautiful job of keeping everyone safe by putting up the little plexiglass you know, separating the cashier from everybody else. But at the same time, it just made me sad, you know, that that's, that's the new world that we live in. And just, man, things can change really fast. Okay, I'm gonna prompt it to boot and I'll let you know on the trust-based DC power supply what's happening. And I see that it is stuck at this 90 milliamps. Let's try that a couple times. All right, let's see. Stuck at 100 milliamps. So for me, something stuck at 100 milliamps, I'm going to check to see whether or not that is kind of booting into DFU. Oh, this is going to be tough. Anne-Marie, don't be in DFU mode. That's going to stink. Let's see. She's not detected by the computer in DFU mode. So on this one, what I'm going to do is because I see that at the battery itself is really the only really, really difficult spot there, I'm going to go ahead and clean up that area because I'm not convinced that uh, we're actually able to apply a stable and steady battery power to this board. So let's go ahead and clean that up and then we'll, then we'll kind of try that again. Let's see. What would you guys in chat do here on giving Anne Marie some good news. It's going to be really, really sad, really sad if we have to give Anne Marie bad news. That's really going to suck. Robbie Robbie says, Hi, Jessa. Hi, everyone. Simple Deck was questioning my salvation recently, but I'm good now. What I do like about the home setup is that I can actually see a lot of chat kind of right over here. All right, so let's see what happens if we kind of clean up this area. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, this looks like it got hit. That's really damaged. So like right here, I'm not, I'm at there. This is rare for iPhones to actually be missing this um, top test point or via on this entire great big fat uh, battery positive. That's pretty unusual. So I'm not convinced that it's actually getting battery power. Maybe it is, but it might not be being delivered all the way through. So we might have to actually measure or even run a jumper from one side of the board to another over here. Yeah, these look pretty beat up. And then this guy's something else. That's a capacitor position right there. All right. United Radio, greetings from Germany. How's it going in Germany? Okay, let's, let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, this, this area here is all battery positive. Let's just kind of maybe make a jumper from this area, kind of a big fat jumper, around to the wherever battery goes, which I, let's see if it pops out somewhere on the bottom side of the board. It's gonna to go to top, but let's see if hopefully there is maybe some spot around here that we could just kind of like be sure that we actually have 
a thick wire between those two things. So let's check. Hmm. Can we see ZXW? Let's see. Can we promote ZXW? Is ZXW working? No. Boo. All right. Let's dig up ZXW. ZXW. Let's. Let's see if we can add you as a source so that everybody can see. Oh, we can see it. Hooray. Yay. It's working. ZXW. See, it's going to work out just great. All right. So let's see. Right here where we have our battery VCC coming in, this is really chewed up and destroyed. So. I'm not convinced that, you know, every one of these little, little vias that go from side A to side B of the board, I'm not sure that they're all actually uh, working. So where does this stuff end up? Battery ends up over here. It goes to uh, U3300, the Tigris chip. So let's just pick one of these caps and just kind of run a fat wire that can be sure to just deliver that battery positive uh, over around there to the side. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's pick, let's see what we can pick. What makes sense to pick? If we kind of make this easy to tap into. What is the easiest thing for us to get to without having to dig up a bunch of stuff? Hmm, none of that looks that easy. Let's see. Um, all right, so there's, mm, that looks kind of hard. So I'm going to look here at maybe C3351. So let's check on C3351. What does it take to actually get around to that? So let's look for that. C3351. All right. Uh, greetings from Belgium. Thanks, Randy. All right. So we're going to go to this little dude. We're going to have to remove a little bit of this bracket in order to get to that guy and these cutters are behind my monitor so let's see if we can just kind of push it up a little bit let's see let's just try to release that where are my cutters let's get them anyway all right now we got some people that are speaking in some kind of language that I don't understand. That does not help with uh, being able to chat in chat. All right. Okay, there we go. So let's just get rid of the metal right there. Don't they all come from China? Not as directly as this one. Okay. So we've got these two right here and let's check again to see ZXW. What do you say? What side is the, the side that's important? Man, I got to close some of this stuff. All right. So it's the side closest to Tigris on C3351, the side closest to Tigris. That will be where we're going to stick a jumper. So let's make it so. All right, now I'd like to do a big jumper. Oh my God, I touched my face. All right, does anybody have any good, good uh, strategies for not touching your face? Because I sure don't. All right, let's see. Let's see, trying to get some good news for Anne Marie. All right. I really want to, I'm really curious though. Anne-Marie, Anne are you awake? Join us on chat. Tell us. How'd you come to be living in Hong Kong? I would think that would be really challenging. I don't think I would be able to survive. I don't think that I could handle it. Now I'd really like this to be a big fat wire, but I don't have a big fat wire right now. So we're going to have to use a tiny little wire. Unless we have to go find one. All right. So that's battery. 
and let's see if we can make it come around here. Where's my jumper tweezers? And let's make it hook in there. Right at the battery connector. Okay. All right. Hello, Jessa from Montreal, Canada. The whole world. Hi, whole world. Everybody's out tonight. Everybody's out looking around. All right, so give me some good book club recommendations. I'm starting up my virtual book club again. Right now we're reading one called A Man Called... Uh, I think you pronounce it Uva, O-V-E, Ov, a man called Uva, maybe, who here speaks the language of, uh, wherever they have kroners. Is it Sweden? I'm not sure. All right, let's see if that makes any difference. Also, let's make sure that this, yeah, this, this squid has seen better days. I'm not sure it's really uh, qualified for this job. All right. Hey, from Dallas. Did my jumper just come off? That sure did. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need to get a bigger jumper. This is going to make it become frustratingly slow. I don't want that to happen at all. All right. Here you go, buddy. There you go. Well, I got to get rid of that piece. One jumper at a time. And let's get rid of this piece, too. There. All right. Take adequate precautions. Oh no, <laughs> the jumper is too tight now. Oh, this is not going well. Not going well. Anne Marie, I really hope we don't have to let you down. I hope we don't have to say, eh, I'm too tired for this. Can't take it. Uh, nope, it's not going to make it that way. Let's see, can it make it the other way? Get rid of that. What's wrong with the phone? This is just snorkel water damage, very, very focal right around the battery connector and Honestly, we're not seeing a ton of damage. However, on DC power supply, it didn't do very much. So we're first, step one, is we're going to kind of enhance the connection between side A and side B of the board at to actually to be able to deliver this, this battery power, because I'm not sure that it was able to do that. All right, so now let's plug this in again. And... Prompt it to boot and see if we can get off 100 milliamps. Because it really doesn't look like much is going on other than there's like a ton of damage right here in this spot. All right, so we're going to prompt to boot. And it is kind of still hanging out here at 100 milliamps. And I don't know. I'm just not really convinced that that's a big result. All right, let's see. Do you, do you detect yourself in DFU mode. Yes or no? Let's give it a chance. It says, it says no. Let's see. I'm going to make sure that this is making good connection as well. How are we doing squid? You look kind of beat up squid, especially this one. Let's see if we can edit you a little bit. 
I don't know. I feel like with the eights and the tens, a lot of times I will work on them and just kind of find that they have a different result when I use battery power, like a bona fide battery versus a squid. They just don't really like to make good connection. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so we're going to plug this back in and prompt to boot again. So I'm prompting to boot. And it's still hanging out at 100 milliamps. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fix the obvious problems around this connector at image. And then I'm going to put a screen on it to see whether or not we can see it at the connect to iTunes logo, which this may be hanging at DFU mode, which it seems like it might be doing, in which case we're going to see if we can see that connect to iTunes logo. And then if so, we would troubleshoot, why aren't you detected by the computer? So I think at this point on this one, we need to bring back image and we can guess that we probably don't have image because of this damage right here in that area is probably going to affect image. So let's clean that up a little bit so we can kind of take a look at the LCD connector. And let's see. Oh, DFU, device firmware upgrade. Yes. Yikes. Yeah, so if there's a saltwater damaged phone, that it could get some sort of momentary transient you know, hardware problem based on salt, which we saw quite a bit of salt in the, um, in the housing here. And if that, if something like that happens, then it could corrupt the software so that let's say there's really nothing wrong with this. It's not going to boot because of software corruption. I don't know this one. It just seems like the problem, it, the problem is going to be where the water went, which is right up here. The only other spot was here, which means it may be worth it to look. Um, it may be worth it to take a look under the hood here since we saw water up there. All right, let's go back to this spot and let's kind of go on an angle and look at this connector and take a look to see if we need to do anything about it. All right, so like right here, that joint, can you see that? Yeah, so we've got a bad looking joint here. Yeah, that's, you can see movement. Do you see that movement? That means that's definitely a cold joint. So that's gonna be an open line at that spot. And then looking down here, this looks, oh, that looks terrible. Oh my gosh. That I'm not even sure we'll be able to connect back without putting a new connector on. All right, now let's see. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that this one is, we're going to be required for image. And let's look at that really ugly looking guy there. Just kind of curious what that guy is. I feel like that might be one of the 1v8 lines, in which case that might explain why this thing can't boot. Let's check it out though. Let's go on a hunt. So where is my ZXW? I gotta close this stuff. What's going on? We have, this is the big missing guy and his line is PP5V7 Mason. So that guy we're gonna need for data recovery. And then this guy, PP5V7 Display. All right, so those are two of the chestnut outputs. So we'll just kind of kick that guy off in case it is short. And what's this? PP5V7, and then we've got some of these guys. All right, let's clean up around this connector area. Oh, everybody's ready to get back to work. I, I hear ya. I'm ready to not have to stream from home where we have barely any internet. How is this stream doing? Is it cutting out? This is kind of a, you know, a test stream. All right, we'll get rid of this guy. Did I don't remember? Did I take ZXW off of here? Nope. There we go. All right. So I just knocked off this guy and 
Let's knock off the neighbor as well. Okay, let's see if we can just kind of get away with just a little rejuvenation at this connector rather than replacing the whole thing. Mostly because I'm not sure, I definitely don't have a new one of these connectors at home, so I would have to harvest one off of some other iPhone 8, which it's doable. And I definitely have an iPhone 8 iCloud locked board laying around just for that purpose. Because I wouldn't want to have to go back to the old days. I can remember, you know, like one of these sort of like repairs you'll never forget. I can remember there was a local guy who called up and said, Jess, I'm in trouble. I have damaged the front camera connector on an iPhone 5C for a customer. And I need you to fix it right away. Can you do it? And I said, sure, I can fix your iPhone 5C front camera connector. And there we go. So he started driving out, which was like an, a one hour drive. So he was, you know, local ish. And at, after he had already left and was due to like get to get to the, the shop, which was in the house at the time, back in the dining room days, almost like now, we've kind of come full circle, almost. I realized that I only had iPhone 5S front camera connectors. And lo and behold, the 5S camera connector was not the same as the 5C. So I did not have a 5C camera connector. And this guy had just driven an hour and was about to show up at any time. So right before he got there, I located an iPhone 5C board that was, um, I don't know, from some data recovery that was donated or something like that. So he then showed up and right in front of him, I had to harvest that 5C front camera connector without damaging it as chatting with him the whole time and then put it successfully on his board as he sat right there, which I did. Yay! But that was that was a, a little bit harrowing at the time. I will never forget that one. All right, so I think that we have healed this connector. All right, let's see. Simple Tech loves his job and loves his clients. Fantastic. Took a while for me to start loading. Hmm. All right. And let's see if we clean out this connector if if it looks like it might actually work or not. All right, let's see. Yeah, that was when, you know, that was when I knew like, yeah, it'll be no problem to do things like live stream on YouTube. It really doesn't get any worse than that. Especially back, back in those early, early days. Back in the dining room days. I was thinking about doing for the channel like a resurrection, you know, some of there's like videos on that are on here still from like back in the dining room days, back that day. I know there's a video somewhere of the repair where we were working on a phone that had been in a porta potty and the whole place just kept smelling like it smelled like human feces, terrible, like somebody shit. It was awful. And then we realized that it was actually not the phone that had been in the porta potty, that it was a baby that Sunday was taking care of, like daycare had actually crapped her pants. All right, let's take a look and see if we have at least some kind of connection on these pins now. Nope, that one is still totally open. Look, still movement. Uh, that one might be okay now. That one's great. The one that I was worried about is the only one that seems pretty much okay. Jessa, how long have you been doing this type of work? Um, since around the time of the iPhone 4. So I saw a couple of iPhone uh, 3GS. So 3GS was sort of like the phone that some people had when I started doing micro soldering. But iPhone 4 was kind of the the, the main one that most people had. The iPhone 5C, that was, you know, brand new. Color. When that came out. And now I have already forgotten which one of these I needed to touch up. 
But before that, for many, many years, I was a molecular biologist doing routine medical research and loved it. And sometimes you want to talk about it, you know, when it comes up. You want to be able to talk about things that you know about and not get constantly demonetized on YouTube. Like this video will undoubtedly be, even though I'm trying really hard to just let this be a happy good news stream for Anne-Marie. This is for you, Anne-Marie, for sending your phone all the way from Hong Kong to Rochester, New York. All right. iPhone 4. That's the one with a large GBS. Wow, I just saw a piece of glitter. I wonder where that came from. All right, now let's check again. That looks a lot better over here in this area. Uh, only this one is still a concern. Always inspect on an angle. Oh, okay, seems all right. All right. Do you work on any Android phones? Yes, we do. We work on Android phones, but only for data recovery. So if you want to see us working on Android phones, you can look over at Mark Schaefer, my right-hand man, Mark, who I will not see again in person for who knows how long. So Mark works out of Jacksonville, and he does all of our Samsung work. So you can check out his channel. All right. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if we put a screen on it. Let's see what happens if we hook up, if we transfer the HDMI input, will it work? Will it work? Kind of, a lot of cords. Oh, I don't really know. I love my like solution. Everything's all set up over, over at the shop. All right, let's just see what happens. Why did you stop your research job? Um, I stopped my research job to become a stay-at-home mom. So uh, I really love research. I was a professor at RIT, which is a local college. And before that, I did, I was a subject matter expert for a software development company that, that developed software for life science research. And before that, I was a grad student for a long time in Scott Kern's lab. I was just talking with Lewis about Scott Kern. He was asking me about, what was that story about Scott Kern? Scott Kern was my, you know, I think is an amazing brain. I love Scott Kern. He's such a skeptic and he's the one that, that just isn't afraid to question anything. And there was like one of his claim to fames was just the, you know, one of the ways that we would, run DNA gels that everyone did. They did it the same way. They used this certain buffer for years, years and years and years and years. And then one day he was just like, why are we using that buffer? On what evidence? And it turns out no one ever thought about it. And it turns out that the real history of it was that the whole world separated DNA using this buffer called TAE. And the reason that they use TAE is because back in the early, early days when everybody worked with proteins and nobody even knew what DNA was, the first guy to try to separate DNA was a protein chemist. So he just used what they had. TAE is a protein separating buffer. So he just used it for DNA and then everybody used it after that. And it took from, I don't even know when that was, decades for Scott Curry to go, oh, why are we using that? You know, I love how he thinks. And What's really sad is that Scott Kern is turned into a really ugly meme, Kerned, K backwards three RN, if you want to look that up on Twitter, a terrible hashtag, because of a really amazing, thoughtful uh, essay that he wrote that said, are we losing the passion for being scientists? And he kind of went around and he checked and he did some math and was like, hey, look, nobody's in the lab on the weekends anymore, which is absolutely true. <laughs> Nobody's in the lab on the weekends. But this man, I mean, he would get up at three o'clock in the morning every day and was a really phenomenal scientist and, and is very much beloved. So, you know, don't ever say anything bad about Scott Kern. <laughs> All right. Now let's just see what happens if we, now that we fixed image, do we have any kind of image? Can we see any kind of image on here or not? 
let's see can you guys see anything at all let's get rid of that all right so it's just kind of chilling out here on this 100 milliamps and i'm going to um, see if that's the same result or not with a battery because it seems to like wobble around a little bit just kind of from bending that so let's just see what happens sometimes you get a different result with a battery than dc power supply so let's just see what happens now we can't read what the current is on this but let's just see let's get a, hey all right we do get a different result with the battery yay come on and boot no 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 don't you do that to me all right so that's some, that's encouraging so that kind of tells us that something's up with this squid which i kind of suspected um let's see if let me see what i have for a definite known good battery let's see what was the last one i used this one all right let's see how hot uh, roughly i always watch mark's videos he is great yeah he is all right let's prompt this to boot again all right how hot roughly should a phone be a note 5 to remove the back glass well gee i don't know about that all right let's see what happens now all right i see an apple logo with a battery that i'm pretty sure is charged up enough to boot a phone so let's try this and see what happens come on Anne marie is counting on you Anne marie wants her snorkeling pictures back for the love of Anne marie just boot up everything is going to be fine come on you can do it you can do it just boot up <gasps> i think i heard it i think i heard the computer detect it yay the computer detected it yay oh yeah did you see that the computer detected it and it did boot up all right that's pretty cool let's see if we can do that again though because i'm not sure why it decided to to kick off this is gonna be good news all right let's see can you do it again all right 60 to 70 degrees says ned what i did today for the first time about heat Here's a pro tip. I had to open up an iPad Air 3. Never even seen one of these things before today. And man, that was a beep <laughs> to get the logic board out of. But it wasn't so bad to open up the screen. So what I did is I cranked up the heat and I took off the nozzle and I put it on the back. So if you heat up the back of the iPad instead of the front. <gasps> I heard it detect again, yay! Can you see that? Yay. Yay! All right, let's see. Trust. Yay! Let's make it bright so that you guys can see. It. Why not? Display and brightness. There we go. Yay! Now, while we have a chance, let's hit continue over here. Continue. Yes. It's going to be good news, Anne-Marie. Let's check it out over here. <gasps> yeah! Awesome! We have a path to data. Okay, you got to see, you got to check out these last pictures. I am sure that Anne-Marie uh, won't mind if we check out the last pictures because I would love to do like a, like a, write a book or some kind of a, a show on the last picture on the roll. I think it'll be fun. Where is accessibilities? Accessibility. Where is, uh, you can tell like how old I'm getting old. Where's the, where's the assistive touch? Help me out chat. Where is assistive touch? Where is assistive touch? You know, I am, I am, by the way, iOS certified. So the only thing I'm certified to know about is stuff like where assistive touch is. 
frozen. You better not be frozen. You better not be. Oh, no. Is it because this computer can't can't think about more than one thing at a time? I'm going to need some AV support. Ah, why is it so frozen all the time? Boo. Did I t use the hot air at all? All I did was pick it up. Man. Frozen stream again. God damn it. Yay, I found more assistive touches. There's her photos. All right, let's see. Okay, kind of ish. Just at the reveal. Okay, kind of. You're back. Kind of. All right, here's the thing that I want you to see. You're back, someone. It's because everyone's overloading Spectrum in AT&T. Yeah, all right, that's, that's, that's working-ish now. All right, I had to hit refresh. Here's the thing that I want you to see. The last picture of the roll, it's Anne-Marie's hand. It's Anne-Marie's hand. Look at that. I would love to write a book or to just go. I want to call up Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, please be in chat. Are you in chat? And, um, and see, what is the story here? Like, when did this phone come to its demise? And you can see that the picture one before is uh, a, a really cool boat. Yeah, so that's what happened there it is, as as we said, this looks like a really cool adventure. And Marie, I want to know more about it. I want to know more about the people. So tell us. Hopefully you'll see this and you can kind of tell us the story because we want to hear the story. And Marie, this is going to turn into a video and we have great news for you. You're going to get back all of your pictures, all of your memories. And we want to know, how did this phone come to be like this? What's up with this boat? And tell us the story, because we just really want to hear some some interesting good news stories that don't have anything bad in them. There, there's no diseases and stuff like that. And we would just love to hear um, the beginning of a story, because this is the end. Anne-Marie, yay! Thank you for trusting us all the way here in Rochester, New York, to send your phone halfway around the world. And I'm going to recover all of these memories for you so good news for you and you will be hearing from us and thanks for being a good sport and letting us put your phone on youtube all right everybody from uh let me see if i can kind of refresh that because that uh it's like behind by like a couple minutes right now Let's see. The light hanging in the hallway. Well, I want you to see the part here. I'm just going to make sure. I'm going to hang out for a minute to make sure that you can see the uh, this uh, this cool story. Emery, what happened to your phone? It's working now. It's not from the hot air. Well, that stinks. I think it's getting ready to click over. Yay! 
Yeah, there you go. An ad started midstream. What the heck? An ad. What? An ad? YouTube better not be putting ads on than demonetizing this stuff. What's that ticking noise? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Wix. Oh. All right. So I'm going to recover this data and hopefully you guys got to see this this uh, little bit here at the end. And Anne-Marie, tell us what happened. We really want to know. All right, that's it for this one. And we're done. <laughs>